On the evening before the heavenly demonic festival, the servants busily prepared the food table for the upcoming celebration. Woon, accompanied by his allies who, Jang, Xian, and Dampyong, observed the preparations. Woon turned to Jang, affectionately calling him grandpa, and questioned why he had prepared so much food. Jang, with a smile, explained that as the young master was believed to be the heavenly demon's descendant, it was only fitting to offer such a plentiful feast as a tribute to the heavenly demon. Woon scoffed at the notion, dismissing the idea of being the descendant of a heavenly demon. He saw himself as nothing more than a troublemaker who caused chaos at the banquet hall. However, Jang insisted that Woon's status as the heavenly demon's descendant held significance. In his mind, he acknowledged that his efforts in building up his image had been in vain. What truly mattered was the role of Frontier King, not his personal image. He hoped that the second young master, Jean, would lower his guard a bit more, particularly after their earlier incident, provoking Azmit to a fight. A servant informed Woon that he had a guest. To his surprise, it was Lady Sarah who arrived. As she removed her mask, she greeted Woon and asked about his well-being. Woon's ally couldn't help but admire Lady Sarah's beauty, finding her truly remarkable. Lady Sarah wasted no time and got straight to the point. She inquired about Woon's plan to surpass the second young master and become the successor in the upcoming test. It was clear that she was no ordinary person, as her directness and confidence stood out. She further explained that in order to form an alliance with him, she needed to know his strategy for bridging the significant power gap between him and the second young master. Woon assured her that he did indeed have a plan. He called for a man to bring a box and opened it before her eyes. She couldn't believe what she saw and expressed her surprise. <gasps> Woon confidently stated that with just that, he would be able to defeat the second young master. As the sun rose on the morning of the heavenly demonic festival, Woon and his companion arrived at the designated test location. True to the descriptions in the novel, they found themselves amidst a rocky area to the east of the imposing Red Mountain. Woon had anticipated this scenario long before the festival began, and he had prepared accordingly. His goal was not necessarily to defeat the second young master, but rather to collect a substantial number of tokens during the test. It was through this accumulation of tokens that he could secure his position as the successor. Sien and Woon readied themselves, ensuring their weapons were prepared for the upcoming race. Sien, filled with concern, questioned whether his conversation with the third young lady had gone well. Woon reassured him, assuring Sien that she was capable of handling her own affairs and that he had already discussed matters with her. With his experiences in the heavenly demonic cave and his diligent preparations, Woon had confidence in his plans. Sien, Understanding Woon's determination, expressed his trust in him. He retrieved a box, containing something crucial to their strategy. With everything in place, he took the lead and confidently declared it was time to go. They set off, following Woon as he led the way to the first base camp. Fully equipped and geared up for the festival, they embarked on their journey, ready to face the challenges and trials that awaited them. Three days had passed since the commencement of the test, and the atmosphere at the location was tense. In the midst of the chaos, a man quivered on the ground, his voice trembling as he uttered the words, Second Young Master. Standing before him were Jean, Jiam, and their troops, a formidable presence. Jean inquired about the Holy Fire Token, a valuable item needed for the test. The man, filled with fear, presented the token to Jean, kneeling before him. Jean reassured him, expressing that there was no need to fear. He promised to protect the man as long as he wasn't an enemy extending his support until the end of the test. Surprised by Jin's words, the man asked if he was serious. Jin, with a warm smile and open arms, confirmed his sincerity. He reminded the man that they were all members of the divine cult, emphasizing that there was no need for unnecessary bloodshed. The gesture aimed to reassure the man and demonstrate unity within the cult. In a fast-paced scene, Will sprinted alongside her guide, a man who led her through the tumultuous terrain. With urgency, he directed her, saying, Young lady, it's this way. In her mind, she couldn't help but wonder if this was what Woon had warned her about. She recalled their previous conversation, where Woon had mentioned the perils of the heavenly demonic festival. He had suggested bringing a guide who might not possess exceptional martial arts skills, but was familiar with the treacherous mountainous landscape. Reflecting on this, Will realized that her current guide fit that description. Woon's words echoed in her thoughts. He had emphasized the importance of having a guide who knew the mountain well, even if they weren't a master of martial arts. She understood the significance of this guidance, especially since many members of their cult focused solely on honing their combat skills 
neglecting the understanding of the dangerous environment they were about to face. Recalling Woon's advice once more, Wu reminded herself to follow a specific direction during the test. Woon had instructed her to head north, regardless of the different starting points they might have in the test location the following day. Returning to the present, Wu realized the grave mistake she had made. In her preparation for the Heavenly Demonic Festival, she had hired a master from the Chanyu clan, assuming that the test would involve unrestricted combat, similar to the events that had transpired three decades prior. However, she now understood that her assumption had been incorrect. With a sense of urgency, Wool knew that her immediate priority was to head north, as Woon had instructed. She needed to reach him swiftly and rectify her blunder. Time was of the essence, and she couldn't afford any delays. In the midst of the second young master's camping ground, a multitude of tents stood tall. Jiam and Jean sat together, counting their tokens, which totaled to an impressive 46. Jin expressed concern, noting that they had yet to see Woon and Wool. Jiam brushed off Jin's worry, dismissing Woon as someone who relied solely on luck. He believed that Woon lacked talent and popularity, and it was only by chance that he had obtained a fortunate encounter in the heavenly demonic cave. However, Jin's thoughts differed. He acknowledged that Woon's success in being the first person to pass the heavenly demonic cave in 300 years could not be attributed solely to luck. He wondered why Woon had not made his move yet, considering the circumstances. Their conversation was suddenly interrupted by a commotion outside the tent. Jiam and Jean swiftly made their way outside to investigate the disturbance. Curious, Jiam inquired about the situation, and a man pointed towards a tree where animal carcasses hung, bloodied and eerie. Jiam, frustrated, berated those who had been startled by the mere corpses of rabbits. He decisively cut down the rope holding the macabre display and reassured everyone that it was just a scare tactic. He instructed his men to return to their positions, reminding them that the individuals responsible for the display had already left, leaving behind food for them. The men complied with Jiam's orders, affirming their understanding. Jean, observing the ground where the rabbit corpses had fallen, speculated on the intention behind the disturbing display. He pondered whether it had been set up as a warning for them, indicating a hidden message or a potential threat lurking in their surroundings. Woon and Sian remained hidden, observing the campground of the second young master from a distance. Sian, seeking guidance, turned to Woon and asked if their strategy of hanging animal carcasses would be effective. Woon responded with confidence, stating that it would likely create significant pressure and unsettle their opponents. Reflecting on the novel, Woon explained that Jean, the second young master, aimed to gain the trust of the cult members by utilizing the test as an opportunity. This was why Jean chose to work with individuals who might not possess exceptional abilities, even if it meant sacrificing mobility. Wun recognized this as a favorable opportunity for himself, as it allowed him to showcase his own capabilities. On the night before the decisive day, a raccoon hung from a tree by a rope. The rope was cut, and the animals fell to the ground. Jean, with a perplexed expression, couldn't help but question Wun's intentions. With a serious demeanor, he declared that he would investigate the situation further, 